In this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to get a super quick win with the Vienna opening. But uh, before we dive right into the actual games, in the first part of the video, I'm gonna provide you with the critical ideas and some of the most common traps that you need to be familiar with. Because let's be honest, trying to play this opening without having any prior knowledge could really feel like, uh, I don't know, you just got up piece of furniture from Ikea and you're trying to assembly without having any instructions. So unless you're like a fucking woodmaster, this is gonna be pretty challenging. So we're gonna take care of that part first and in the second part of the video, I'm gonna be playing three games against lower rated opponents, walking you through my thinking process as an international master, trying to highlight the typical mistakes that these lower rated players do. So please feel free to use the timestamps from the description, pick what you need and uh, Let's get started. All right, everybody, are you there? Are you still with me? Because this is really the most important part of the video. So we're gonna be opening up with E4. And with that, we're assuming that they're gonna be going for the move E5, which is uh, by far the most common line uh, below 1500. If you're playing planning to do that in this rating range, uh, that is for sure the main thing that uh, you're about to see. I mean, if you're interested in any other openings? Hey, we've got plenty of tutorials on the channel, but uh, let's stick to our horses for now. And against the move e5, we're going to be going for the Vienna opening by going for the move knight to c3. Yes, we're not going to be doing any Rui Lopez or any kind of Italian. You may be wondering, uh, I heard Rui Lopez is like the best opening in chess and I should be playing that. Well... That is, you know, definitely kind of true if you're planning to become like a world champion one day. But the problem with the Rui Lopez is that there is so much fury and it's so hard to actually learn it that you're probably just gonna quit just like five times in the process and uh, get back to your ex. So, uh, we we'll better not let that happen and we're gonna go for the Vienna being very good boys. And the good news is that Black has a choice between basically two main moves. So... They will either develop this or that knight to their natural square. So let's begin with knight f6, okay? You may be wondering, okay, what if they do this, planning to, I don't know, develop the bishop somewhere and get castle? That is pretty common. Well, I'm glad you asked because here we're going to be going for the Vienna Gambit. Now, what makes the Vienna Gambit so interesting? I'm going to be honest with you. They just wins in five moves. This gambit just cracked chess. Not even kidding. I mean, sure, in like top level chess, the Vienna gambit is not winning on the spot uh, or anything close to that. But you'd be shocked. Below 1500, uh, yeah, online rating in Blitz, everybody seems to be losing their mind against F4. It's like opening a weird portal to like a new dimension. Everybody's like losing their mind. So, I'm going to be doing f4 and uh, I'm going to be showing you what happens most of the times. Now, the only kind of playable alternative that black has is d5. But after fe, knight e4 and now stopping queen h4 uh, with queen f3 because then we can just do g3. Uh, I think white gets very interesting play in these positions after knight takes and then bishop f4 along castle ideas. Uh, I explain that in greater depth uh, in my chessable course if you are interested to, I don't know, for some reason, pick this opening up. Uh, but they're not even going to do that against you, trust me. They're going to be uh, going pawn takes on f4. And now we're going to be like, aha, uh -huh, what are you going to do with a knight? The knight is under attack. Now, what is actually so, so shocking about this position is that the knight almost has no moves. You may be wondering, okay, they can go there, protect the pawn. I'm not on a pawn, what do we do? Well, we just take the knight, you bozo. So that is not a move. But instead of this, they could also go for the sad retreating knight g8 move where as long as you don't blunder queen h4 check, which uh, apparently a lot of people do, just start with knight f3 and then d4. Bishop takes, white is just way better, close to plus one. So... What actually most of your opponents will do, they're going to be like uh, trying to play it a little bit more clever. And uh, they're going to go queen e7, trying to say basically, okay, we gotcha. Pawn is pinned, the pawn do not move. So after queen e7, 
what we can do to make the pawn move again. We can go for the move queen e2, which is saying, all right, we're unpinning, yeah? Now this becomes a thing. And in the meantime, okay, what's important about queen e2 is that it's also protecting the pawn. So you could unpin with other moves, but that would lose the e5 pawn in a pretty embarrassing fashion. I don't know why would you ever do that. So queen e2 is better. And now our uh, yeah amazing opponent is going to play knight g8. Kind of, uh, you know, saying, okay, I lost the battle, uh, but I did not lose the war. They're going to be very optimistic, trying to fight for their chances. Now, we're going to be once again, what do we do? Do you guys even remember what was the threat in this position? Please focus. Why are you doing anything else while watching the videos? Why do you multitask? You need to be 100% watching, okay? If you don't remember what is Black's threat, what's even the point? Now... This was, of course, meant for like only the 10% that are asleep while watching now. I know most of you guys are like very, you know, watching this with like a super analytical eye and, uh, you know, just having maybe even like a notebook next to you, taking uh, notes and uh, yeah, having like a fancy chess set next to you or stuff like that. So I appreciate all of those of you that are doing that, of course. Uh, no need to mention this. But uh, now... Probably you all remembered that black has a pretty annoying move. And for that, we'll just go knight f3. Okay, now, let's actually try to put ourselves in black shoes. Now, what they're gonna do? Let's flip the board. Whoa, so black is having a pretty crappy position. As we can see, they only developed the queen and they don't have much to do. So, ideally, black would love to get castled. If you look at this position, they would like to... Some of play, play knight f6, teleport the bishop uh, over the e7 queen. I mean, you probably saw uh, the game between Levy and Chad GBT. You know that Chad GBT likes to do these kind of things, so it probably would do it here and uh, escape it. But uh, that's not a thing. So they would try to play the move d6, saying, okay, what is their dream in this position when they play d6? They want us to take, they want to trade, and then they want to go bishop takes from d6, knight f6, and get castle and get a game. So that's what they want to do. Now, let's come back to that position after d6. Yeah, they just play d6. Yeah, they're hoping they're going to get that. Now, time to flip the board again. And the question is, okay, this is the position. How do you win? As long as you're not playing against chat GPT or GPT, or whatever it is. So, you can go ahead and pause, because White just has a crushing uh, move and, like, a very beautiful solution to just make opponent uh, cry and quit chess. Okay. Probably not if he's older than uh, 10 or something like that, but anyways, you'd be surprised. <laughs> so, uh, okay, the move is to actually just go for 95. You may be wondering, oh, uh, 95, I don't know what is that. I was thinking something else. Well, 95 is actually hitting the queen. And you may be wondering, okay, cannot black just play a move like queen e6? Keeping this thingy going over. Well, problem is that allows the fork and why just wins. So they really need to do something that's still protecting the c7 pawn. Now, according to the statistics, okay, I did my research, guys, you'd think I'm just coming at you with, like, random lines and what I think, like, Grandma Josephine has played while she was young and stuff like that. No, this is actual stats, okay? This is proven. This is what they're going to play most of the time. They're going to do Queen D7. So, when Queen D7 happens, you may be thinking, oh, we go intermediate move. Yes. But no, we're not going to do that. I mean, you can. It's still winning. Technically, according to the computer, everything wins in this position. Except you. But we have even a nicer solution. Which is knight takes on c7. Now, knight takes on c7 is a very interesting move because you can take there. But that allows ed6. That is discovery and we managed to win the queen. That's a pretty nice trap to get the video going. Now, I hope you're still with me and you're actually paying attention to some of these things. So we can actually just move on to... Okay, we saw knight f6, f4. 
they take e5, they in trouble. We know that. But what if they go knight c6? You may be wondering now. Uh, if we play f4, they're going to take an hour. Queen h4 is a big threat. You Romanian guy with a fanny accent. You may be wondering. Well, that is true. If we try the same knight f3, g5, this becomes very kind of weird and... Uh, yeah, it's not as good as the previous one for sure. And I don't recommend you play f4 here. Against knight c6, it's pretty important. We just do a normal uh, developing move with the bishop. So we play bishop to c4. Now, what is the main uh, point of playing the bishop and not the knight? You may be wondering. Well, in a lot of these lines, uh, we're keeping options of playing d3 and then f4 with knight f3. So... Uh, yeah, it's just um, kind of f4, knight f3, if you think about it. You could just play knight f3, d3, and castle anyways, and get developed. But having the opportunity of potentially opening up the f file for the rook, you know, like, uh, basically a bit faster, it's like, uh, I don't know, you go to school, but you already got sandwiches from home or something like that. I don't know. It just makes it better. You get it. You get it, guys. I'm pretty sure. So, uh, we play bishop to c4. Now... Chances are you're doing this in lower rated games. They're going to be like, oh, let me just beat her. And they're going to play the move bishop to c5. Now, we can go queen g4. And the main point of this, besides the fact that if they keep mirroring, we're going to get a free queen. That's going to be a dumb idea. This is a pretty tricky question uh, for black to answer. Now, if they play the normal move g6, you have to really pay attention to this moment because if you mess it up, d5 is just gonna kill you. I'm telling you guys. Maybe, I don't know, London system videos, like a hundred of them didn't kill you, but d5 will, I'm telling you. So this is a problem. So we need to play queen f3, sidestepping that uh, very dangerous threat while threatening mate in one, which is nice. Now they basically have two main options. If uh, they go, let's say, block with a knight. Now we have knight g2. Important move, stopping knight d4. That would be hitting the queen. They would mainly castle. And we play d3. And according to the statistics, most of the people will play the move d6, which is just losing on the spot. Now, it is for you to understand why bishop g5, king g7. This is a winning position for white. What is the killer move that's just giving us a win on the spot? So. Uh, Assuming you pause the video, the answer is 95. Of course. We just uh, put pressure on the knight and there is no way for black to defend. So, knight f6 is quite problematic. But instead of this, you may be wondering, okay, what if they do queen f6? Well, queen f6 is actually allowing us to go for knight e5, which is just forcing a much better endgame after queen f3, knight f3, and bishop to b6. The key move is a4. And that is preparing uh, all kinds of b4, a5 ideas, trying to trap the bishop. And according to the statistics, they will freak out and play a5, allowing knight takes and d3. With a very annoying threat of bishop e3 and then simply picking up the b6 pawn with already a crashing position for white, according to the computer. So none of these are actually good. So g6, remember, drop the queen, should be good. Now, the more interesting part is, okay, we saw that, g6, nobody plays uh, this slow. You may be thinking, well, what if they try queen f6? Protecting this and hitting the f2 pawn, that feels like almost a mating threat. Well, yes and no, because we can actually just uh, go knight e5, completely ignore that. Now, this may be a little bit shocking because, uh, yeah, queen takes on f2, king d1, you may be thinking, oh, the queen of one, it is a checkmate. And this is actually the main reason of uh, why it is important to stick so long into these videos and watching through this uh, very high level explanation because I'm about to reveal perhaps one of the most important secrets that I ever did on this channel. So you're ready. The bishops do move backwards. So you can just take their white wins. So now that you know this very uh, high level information, we can move on to another move. So let's say, okay, what if they play d6? That is apparently what they normally do. Um, hitting the queen. I mean, already black is dealing with a very 
unpleasant double attack. I mean, they're in danger of losing their both rooks. It's like, uh, I don't know. Uh, you're just uh, trying to play chess, but no more dice. You cannot play anymore. So, uh, they go d6. Queen takes on g7, hitting the rook. And a bishop to e6 is what happens in the database normally. And it's important because you don't want to be rushing with the rook. And the key move is to actually just go knight h3. Now, what knight h3 accomplishes as well, it's hitting the queen. And on queen d4, typical idea, just play d3 and c3 is trapping the queen on the very next move. And in case they go for bishop takes on h3, do not rush with taking, but go for the intermediate move, rook f1. And this is simply winning the queen, because if black tries to keep it with a move like queen g2, let's say, that allows uh, queen takes on f7. Followed by a pretty forced mate. After queen f8, king up, rook check, either knight blocks, sacrifice the rook, and then uh, we're gonna be having a checkmate on the c7 square. So, uh, yeah, this line is uh, trouble for black. Very common once again, below uh, 1500. Um, they mirror you, you play queen g4, they go queen to f6, and then you just uh, jump with the knight. We already had this multiple times in uh, our Vienna opening rating climb that we're doing. So you really want to be aware of this. So uh, yeah, if you guys somehow made it till this point, listening to all these uh, yeah, annoying analogies and uh, random <laughs> thoughts that I have, why don't we actually just uh, dive right into the actual games? All right, everybody getting the white pieces uh, yet again. Now, everybody is wondering, is this going to be another crushing Vienna classic? I don't know about that. We'll see. I mean, maybe your opponent will outperform me and just uh, make me delete my YouTube channel. That could also be the case. Uh, <clears throat> why not? So it starts with the move C6. Okay, this is actually a little bit interesting uh, right away because this is not the most common move. Well, the idea behind it is not wrong. If you ask yourself, well, what is opponent trying to do with that move? He is threatening to push d5, getting a pretty solid pawn center, okay? Can't really blame him for that. However, the drawback of this move is that it's not developing any pieces. So for that reason and for other reasons as well, I mean, I mainly remember how to... Refute this because this is a sideline mentioned in my course, of course. Uh, shouldn't have said that. Uh, anyways, c6, why isn't it very good? Well, you can just play d4. Now, d4 is actually a pretty counterintuitive move for a number of reasons. Uh, oh, I was definitely not expecting that. Okay, that is not part of the course. D5 is definitely taking me a little bit by surprise, okay? We'll have to just sort of uh, figure it out uh, yeah, on our own right now. No idea what is going on. But anyways, before we do that, uh, the point with D4 is that after E D4, it looks counterintuitive because we had to take back with a queen and queen in the middle, maybe flashbacks to the Scandinavian. Queen is vulnerable, they can attack. But that's not a thing because the pawn is there, so they can't develop the knight. Meaning our queen is completely safe and on a very nice central square. So because of that, I guess opponent didn't take and plays d5. Now, how should we approach this position? Of course, I think it makes sense to go over the most forcing move. So that is usually captures and checks. No checks that I can see, therefore capture should be. Now... There's a seemingly free pawn on e5, but there is something that makes me feel a little bit uncomfortable taking on uh, on e5 because it looks a little bit too nice to be true, you know? Uh, and that is the move d4. After d4, where do we move the knight? Oh my god, this is so good. <laughs> This is actually so good. Oh my god, I know this, this is actually working, but I just came up with an idea that is just too nice if it works. That is just... This video is going to get a million views if this works. Called it. Let's watch. Taking. I'm hoping he plays d4 and he just doesn't make some kind of like a random terrible move which he ends up playing. Alright, I got a little bit excited there, but... 
I think we could still sort of try to jepate this. Oh my god, guys. I mean, you don't know how I feel right now because I'm kind of feeling like I have to play the best move right now. But also, there's like a little bit of a devil on my shoulder saying you have to still try the trap. I'm going to still try the trap, okay? I cannot uh, resist this. I'm just going to play Knight of Dream. Never mind, that's not allowing the trap. I miscalculate. Okay, it, it does, it does. Okay, that's a blunder, but I missed it. My opponent missed it too. This is an absolute clown fiesta. Might not even be working now that I'm thinking about it. Dang it! <laughs> My point was to actually play the move bishop to c4. Just gonna be like, oh no, my knight. And then I wanted to go for a little bit of a sacrifice. I'm not sure if you guys can find this move. But the idea was to go for bishop takes on f7. Now, what this does, he's gonna be sort of forced to take with a king. We're gonna pick up his queen. All good, you know, you may be, oh, I'm winning a queen. Just free win. But no, you have to actually think about the upcoming positions because opponent has C takes on B2. Discovery check. Whoops, I meant that. And then taking the rook, promoting to a new queen. <laughs> and oh boy, I feel like that is a problem. Now, I'm going to have to play king E2. He's going to promote. Now still, I have knight G5. He can go king G6. And I have queen E8. Which looks almost, almost mating. I mean, I don't care. Good or bad. Probably total nonsense. But for the trap, we need to play this. I mean, I don't care if it works or not. Let's see, guys. Let's let's pray it works. I mean, he's probably not even going to think... I don't know what this guy is going to do. Like, this opponent is the most unpredictable human being that I've ever seen. This is absolutely crazy. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, he goes bishop g4. Now, still... The pawn is free to capture, but I'm going to try to be consistent and play for the same idea. Why is he not taking my knight? I don't get it. This is just freaking me out. I've never been so mad ever in my life, okay? He does that, finally. And we're about to deliver the idea that I was craving for uh, here, basically. Like, four moves ago, somehow... We get there. So we go bishop takes on f7. Sacrificing my dignity. And then he's about to take and we take the queen. Now you may be wondering, all right, he can play king d7, king e7, dude. You haven't, I bet you haven't seen that one. Well, I saw it in the first place and apparently opponent does too. I was thinking there is bishop g5. And yeah, do I want to play that? The thing is he still has knight f6 to save. And it's not very clear at all what is going to happen and all of that. But I feel like we kind of committed, haven't we? All right, I've got no time. Now i got to actually... Yeah, probably going to get completely bamboozled by my 1000 rated opponent. But I don't know. That's the fun part of it, I guess. You never know uh, what to expect on this channel. Win or lose, brilliant or completely embarrassing. I guess that's what uh, keeps you guys uh, coming back or making you unsubscribe. Anyways, whatever the case would be, I'm just going to play queen c1. Just looking like a complete weirdo. Trying to keep queens on the board and looking for some ways to play queen there. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna take his knight. Now, I wanna bring the queen and potentially go for some tricks. He could do this, which is making me very uncomfortable, but I think there we have a win. I think we have a pretty nice intermediate move there. You guys can try to find. Also, is he taking on b2? Am I playing queen f4 or am I taking? I don't know. Both look rather tempting. He's gonna promote, which is... Yeah, probably we cannot allow that. So he takes. Now, obvious move would be this. But I said, this is actually losing because uh, we have a discovery, okay? What is he going to do? Now, this is a bit of a threat. Too, so that's why it's important, guys, not to rush with recapturing. You always want to look for uh, counterattack first. So we could take the rook, but I feel like bringing the queen 
could be even better. Just a little bit better. Not like a lot, but... Hmm. Oh, he takes that, but... I think that is a checkmate. Checkmate ends the game. Am I right? I think we just got him. So... I know what you get, guys uh, may be wondering. Okay, let's check the game review. This was like an absolute clown fiesta. I'm curious what the accuracy of this game was. I have no idea either. If I had to guess, that would probably be like a 75 slash 80. That would be the range. Let's see. I'm not like really good at guessing these things, but... Let's see. I feel like I played pretty poorly, but I hope it was like somewhat interesting at least. Not even 75? Oh my god, this is gross. Look at this. Look at this, guys. 71. This feels like pretty dirty, but... Uh, I don't know. I just really wanted to highlight this idea just to show you in the first place what my initial intention uh, was after d5. I took... I was like really expecting him. He plays d4. I, I thought I, I could play bishop c4. I'm a genius. That's how I was thinking. He plays d4, bishop c4, first line, you see? So we were kind of right with that, with the idea to take on f7. This is completely winning, of course. But okay, I mean, I told you when he plays bishop before, we kind of have to, all right, just forget about any fancy tricks, any blah, 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 just play normal chess and try to win the game. I was like doing everything but trying to win this game. So I go knight f3. When it goes d4, <laughs> the pawn is like not defended by anything. I mean, sure, it's by the queen, but it's not enough because I've got two pieces on it. I could always take easiest win of all time. Yeah, two pawns. I'm like, okay, let's make it interesting. Now, opponent plays bishop g4, which is a very pre unpredictable move in itself. Because it's doing nothing but allowing me to take once again. Now, the interesting part was, can he actually take on c3? The computer thinks he can. Honestly, I thought we we're going to mate him somehow. So I'm going to just show you the line that I uh, was going through in my mind after dc3. I thought there's bishop takes on f7. And yeah, apparently this is mating as I calculated, but king e7 is sort of saving. So if you remember, guys, I was sort of talking alone in the uh, beginning of the video like I normally am. And... He took on a1. I was having this position and I thought, okay, king g6, queen e8. I said, that has to be mating, okay? When I see the king on h6, this just looks very iffy. And apparently we could just do something like knight f7. Yeah, king has to go there. Pick up the rook. I thought, maybe not. Apparently picking up these two things is enough. That would give uh, us a winning position. But apparently I missed a better defense. Like, uh, you know, nothing surprising there. If you guys uh, tune in to the channel to, like, expect a perfect game or something like that. I mean, just want to tell you from the very, very beginning, you are here. I don't know, for whatever reason. I mean, maybe Gotham Chess is, like, fucking sick or something and he doesn't post a video. You somehow stop all across the channel. You're here. Now, what do you expect? Like, whatever that is... Lower your expectations, I don't know, by a lot. We see everything but the best games here. So, take one f7, apparently you could do king e7. I would have probably gone bishop g5, but apparently that's absolutely losing to knight f6. Why is that losing? Wish I could, guys, explain you. I mean, <laughs> that's kind of my job, but... That seems to be a pretty uh, tricky task to do here. I guess simply the threat that C takes on B2 is about to happen. It is quite scary, so this puts black quite ahead. But anyways, I think, yeah, we we'll just have a quick look on how the game concluded. And Bishop F7, I am better, apparently, even after Queen C1, Computer thinks queen e2 would have been better. Yeah, this was a mistake, okay? And I cannot really stress enough how important this moment was for the whole game where I am sure that most of the people would have gone, okay, bishop takes on f3, I have to autopilot, I have to take back and then move on. Which 
just loses you the game. That's it. Instead, you don't want to like actually even you don't want to go into the other extreme as well. But every time you have a move, you want to think, okay, he did that. Before you play like the defensive move, which would be recapture, try to look for a counter attack. Okay, don't like hyper obsess with it, just trying to counter attack every single time when there is actually no counter attack in the position. But ask yourself this: What's the point behind my opponent? Can I go for a counter attack? Just ask yourself this question. Um, yeah, spend like a few seconds there and move on. A lot of the times you could just win in games like this. So, to on G7, of course, I mean, I can just pick up the Rook with a winning position. I wanted to do this. And on King E8, I would have... Uh, yeah, I was actually considering Rook AD1 just to make it interesting to sack the Rook and uh, set up a mating net. I wasn't sure, though, what to do on Knight D7. So, um, yeah, apparently bishop f6 is a very sexy move because the rook is trapped and that is actually just going to win the game, apparently. So, uh, yeah, he takes, allows the mate in one, which, uh, of course, uh, makes it pretty simple and we manage to cash in the game. All right, everybody, getting the white pieces. Going to open up the game with... Uh, e4 and the opponent going for the most common move, just uh, stepping in the center with e5. I'm gonna go for knight c3, already know uh, the Vienna, just uh, preparing to play f4, just a second somebody is uh, calling me, which is uh, very strange because I don't like to be called. Anyways, I'm gonna ignore that uh, because I like to hang out with you guys more and I have no other social life, but opponent goes knight c6, what is that? Um, Telling us, well, basically not that much yet. It's just saying, okay, Vienna Gambit, no longer that interesting. F4, pawn takes, queen h4 becomes a big threat. That is pretty tricky. So Vienna Gambit, very important. We only like to play it against knight f6. That's when f4 works better because the queen is closed. Okay, just a little bit of context for that. So against knight c6, what do we do? We stick with the normal Vienna opening. Just gonna get the bishop out onto c4. And you may be wondering, all right, how about this knight? You heard this opening concept before saying that it's better to develop knights before bishops, which in general, I think it's definitely applicable. However, a nice little advantage of uh, delaying knight's development from g1 is that, well, we could just get a pretty interesting uh, version after d3 and then f4, knight f3. Just uh, kind of doing two things at once, opening up the file and then getting the knight uh, outside. Okay, now opponent goes bishop c5 and uh, this may be one of those games where we win in like uh, eight moves. I don't know. I'm calling it. I don't know if this is actually going to happen or not. Guess we're about to find out because when he plays bishop to c5, that is a very common sort of dubious move below 1500. So the main line in this position is to go for knight f6. And just developing, we play d3 and then bishop c5 is better. And the reason why that is better for black compared to this is that now we have a pretty weird uh, and aggressive queen move, queen g4. That is just kind of theory. You can hardly come up with these things during the game. Just a little bit of uh, yeah knowledge that you need to have, which, uh, by the way, I have a chessable course about this, so I spend a lot of time going over these lines, so in this position after queen g4, they have many ways of dealing with this. Uh, queen f6 is by far the most common move which my opponent just played. Also, g6 is a thing, as well as king f8 in this position. On g6, I believe queen f3 is the idea. And on queen f6, this is actually leading to one of the most uh, common traps of the whole opening because it looks like, well, black has just played queen f6. What is that threatening? It is threatening to take on f2. And that almost looks uh, like a checkmate. Almost. So let's actually see whether this is going to be a checkmate or not. I'm just saying this like I don't know the answer yet. Okay, I hope you noticed that. So... Um, killing his queen and 
I'm gonna be like, all right. Oh no, my pawn. What is he gonna do? By the way, 95 is a very strong move. Also putting pressure on the c7 square, threatening the fork. Now, opponent perhaps a little bit confused, a little bit puzzled, just goes for the move queen g6, which is similar to the signation already. I mean, what? What is opponent even trying to do with this move? I don't get it. Just offering the queen trade when uh, we're about to deliver a fork. That doesn't make a, make a whole lot of sense, but I don't get it. Why wouldn't you take on f2? What was the opponent even thinking while playing this? It's, it's very hard to uh, really come up with, but anyways, uh, yeah, we had that position before, so perhaps I could li link you to like a different video uh, where my opponent did take. Now we see queen g6, which is literally going to lead to a very sort of effortless win, which, you know, normally happens when you play the Vienna because uh, this opening is just broken, okay? It's just too strong. You're like below 1500, you're not playing the Vienna. I don't know what you're doing with your life even. I, I don't get it. What, what, are you just like playing video games? I don't know. Okay, see? Seven moves. I'm I'm not even like having... To do anything to win now my question is why wouldn't you be able to do the same there's no rocket science or anything like that just pure uh yeah i knew how to get the bishop out and i knew about the move queen g4 okay and then knight e5 sure that is for sure something you could come up with um especially by watching these videos if you by the way if you do i mean i really appreciate you so um, of course, the better move for opponent would have been to take on f2 and then uh, king d1 only move. The key idea is that we're not going to be getting mated. Okay, that looks like a mate, but it's not because the bishop could cover. So the bishop do move uh, backwards. If there's like any takeaway from this video, if you want to share anything with your friends or something like that, bishops do move backwards. Okay, there you go. So... I think I had a game. I'm trying to remember what my opponent played in like the previous game, but I'm like really not gonna be able to remember. So we'll better just uh, not do that and uh, move on to the following game. All right, everybody, getting the white pieces and uh, looking forward to another Vienna opening. Now, what is my opponent going to play? It looks like he starts with this knight, which is. Sort of countering the Vienna gambit a little bit because after f4 pawn takes, queen h4 becomes a pretty annoying thing, which is not the case when they begin with the other knight. This is way better. There is e5, white is close to winning. So on knight c6, we just start with uh, developing the bishop. And is he gonna do the same? Or is he gonna do the knight move? Or what else? Or the bishop to b4? It is apparently knight f6. So, in this position, I would expect either bishop c5, bishop b4, or a knight there. This is the main move. So far, my 800 rated opponent has been playing top level theory. I mean, it's three moves in, so let's not get too excited yet. Just gonna play d3, and the idea is that in a lot of these lines, we could just play with f4, which I think I'm about to do. Kind of seeing in the future that we're gonna castle, and the rookie is gonna be pretty happy on f1, you know? I mean,. Uh, yeah, I don't know, guys. You could think about it if you're, like, in the fifth grade. I don't know if we've got, like, any kids that are watching, but you're in the fifth grade. Basically, when you play f4, you see in the future that you're going to castle short. Your rookie's going to be happy. It's like you get to the favorite high school that your parents want, but you hate. So that is basically the same. You're going to get in a pretty nice position. According to them, you won't really know what to do from that point, but we'll have to figure it out together. So he plays d6, we're gonna go knight f3, and then about to castle short, most likely. I mean, d6, by the way, pretty ugly move to make because it's sort of locking the bishop, however, defending the center, so it's nice from that perspective. When I plays bishop g4, usually whenever you see a bishop landing there, h3 should be crossing your mind. Now... I'm considering whether we can go for any kind of crazy legal checkmate, which probably not the case, okay? Probably not. So h3 takes, takes, knight e4, queen f4, queen d1, probably d1 is safer. 
because there is an IG4 is best. However, just to keep it very simple, I'm considering a move such as bishop b5, simply getting rid of this concept of opponent getting knight e4 in, in all these variations. So, also wondering, uh, do I have like a bishop sack at any point in like any of these lines? That would be kind of nice, but uh, I kind of doubt that there he is. Yeah, I'm just going to castle, okay? Screw that. Quick development. Not going to worry about it now. Is it very clever? I guess we'll find out. There is like a previous game, I think, uh, on the channel where I had a similar position and I decided to play bishop b5, which I know for a fact is always a thing. Also, what I'm doing right now should be okay, according to the computer. That's my intuition. That's why I'm playing it, obviously. But I just feel like this could give us a bit of a more interesting position. So, he takes. I'm gonna keep it very simple. Just take back with a bishop. Move 8. We finish development. We castle. We only need to connect rooks next. And we're good to go. I'm hoping he plays bishop e7. Never mind. He goes knight e4. Now, taking probably not the best. Two minor pieces for the queen, not enough. Just quickly checking, is bishop f7 a thing? Most likely not. Okay, what else? I could just do queen d2 and just ignore that. I mean, knight f3 take with a pawn, we don't really care. However, another interesting move in the position could be e5, because there is this sort of very important basic rule that says, okay, Whenever your opponent's king is in the middle, what should we do? We need to open up the possession. So, e5 definitely filling the role. Problem with e5 is though I don't really see a clear follow-up, and after de, we might be helping him open up the bishop. So, I think I'm more inclined to do a move like queen d2. Simply connecting rooks, I'm pinning, threatening this in case of knight takes. Yeah. That's it. Just take back with a pawn and we've got a very nice position with a nice lead in development and a little bit of extra space in the center. Uh, do you know what to do with that and win? Of course not, but uh, we'll try to do our best and uh, see. Maybe we could uh, <laughs> avoid blundering for more than five moves and hopefully that will get us uh, yeah, in a pretty interesting position. Pawning goes bishop to e6. Now, I have mixed feelings about that move because, well, first of all, it allows us to take. But then I clearly don't see a follow-up. You may be wondering, okay, he's threatening this. We kind of have to step back or do something about it. Now, I don't think for him necessarily taking is so great because it's opening us, opening up the center for us and he never gets a point break. So, I mean... For sure, we cannot really go wrong with a move like bishop b3. I can tell you that as well. But I just feel like the king is a little bit open here. So just a nice uh, improving move. King h1, preparing this potentially and just making the king safer overall. Just waiting a little bit to see what opponent has in mind. If he goes d5, well, according to the rules, that shouldn't necessarily be uh his play because he is behind in development, he didn't castle yet, so opening up the position won't be making a lot of sense. I mean, chess is unfair sometimes though, so probably we should have considered that in greater detail, but uh, okay, he goes queen e7. Now, what is this move telling us? So basically, whenever somebody plays queen d7, I think about it this way. He is most likely gonna cast along. I clearly see that. Now, what can we do about it? We could think of potentially setting up a little trap. And I'm going to be like, okay, opponent. Let's see what you've got here. Just going to move my queen. Apparently not doing much. But just in case he castles long, and I may be wrong for that, I think we could even pre-move that move. I think he's for sure very likely to forget. I mean, I'm not saying you play this, you hope he forgets. I'm just saying it's... Very annoying for him to deal with this idea because now he most likely has to switch to short castle because of this move. Okay, he takes, we just recap. 
and it's kind of hard for him to do anything else like a6 okay he goes queen six attacking the pawn very respectable move by my opponent i'm gonna be like okay what do we do nothing fancy b3 defend i was checking for a counter attack just in case you were wondering but there was none so b3 defend and then his position is pretty tricky. What is he going to do? There's nothing he can attack. So he's probably going to long castle blunder a7. He should be playing bishop e7 switch to the other plan. But then we get a little bit of pressure thanks to the open file. So whatever he does, I feel like he's in a little bit of trouble. He could play a6 so that he doesn't blunder the pawn when castling. But that's giving us a hook. So he goes that. Just take the open file while gaining a tempo. Usually a pretty good idea. Castling is just completely lost because of bishop h6, so we cannot do that either. If he plays g6, that is going to be a bit ugly. If he plays g6, we have an amazing move, I feel like. That's going to make it so uncomfortable for my opponent. I can't wait to show you. By the way, if g5, that just looks, you know, aggressive and good, but it's pretty bad. So we just play bishop e3, reroute it, and he's weak for the rest of the game. Knight h5, interesting move, attacking and defending. That's actually a pretty good find. What can I do? Slide back, maybe knight d5 next. Still, castling seems to run into bishop h6. You could try bishop f6. Can play knight d5. By the way, I have to say that this guy is playing way better than an 800. I would have expected him to blunder long time ago. But we'll see. So... Yeah. Still ideas of knight d5, in case he castles long, probably the same bishop takes on a7 pro, he just, if opponent's chilling, he's just chillaxing, I mean, he, he doesn't care, opponent is just like Hikaru here, he, he's just chilling, okay, knight on the edge, defend the pawn, I mean, what could go wrong, okay, I'm just gonna centralize my knight, just gonna gradually improve my position, now, also setting up a little trap, because why is castling bad? It was allowing knight takes on e7, taking bishop and then picking up the queen. Now, when this happens, we have a choice. We can take, win a pawn. However, we open up the rook. So, that doesn't seem like a very fair trade. Then, what do we do? We look for uh, an aggressive move. What type of aggressive move? Attacking his pieces. How do we attack his pieces? With the pawn. That's literally the only move that's attacking. So, we play f4, keep the tempo up. Now... He is likely to do bishop f6. Now, taking would sort of give up the monster knight on d5 that we have. So probably that's not what we want to do. And on bishop f6, we could do basically two main things. Move the rook. Rook e1 or something like this. Rook d1, rook on the open file, whatever. Or bishop d4, which is a little bit more like uh, aggressive, putting a little bit of pressure on opponent. Now, which one do we actually want to go for i feel like bishop d4 is pretty cool because it's easier to predict what's gonna happen guys it's 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 the same in like pool or snooker so it's not about focusing on the pot it's about focusing where the cue ball is gonna land and what are you gonna be able to do with your next shot so that's why bishop d4 i feel like it's a stronger move here because clearly was putting pressure on the bishop now we have to take and the position is a little bit more clear now what is he gonna do any castle is a blunder. Still, he's not blundering, dude. This guy is supposed to blunder. Somebody has to call this guy and tell him. Dude, you were supposed to blunder ages ago. How do we win? I feel like the knight is pretty vulnerable, so... I really just want to attack this knight so badly, so I'm gonna go queen d1. Now... He doesn't have a lot of moves. I think he may just be playing g6, and then... It's your task, guys, to actually come up with, uh, with a strong move for white. Well, not now, because that's clearly just giving the game and uh, <laughs> allowing an easy win. So finally, I, I mean, this guy has my respect. 20 moves without blundering. Dude, that is way better than most players in 800. So I'm going to pick up the rook with a check and then... I'm just going to try to offer a queen trade. So I'm going to defend this pawn while offering a queen trade with queen to d5. If we take queens, it's usually 
way easier to convert. If he declines the queen trade, it's giving us a lot of lines and activities. So we can think of e5 and just try to open up the position. We e5 and try to go for a, perhaps even checkmate. Even though I'm usually like a fan of trading and forcing the endgame. If they avoid a trade, you kind of have to make them, you know. It's like they're asking for it. They're like begging for the checkmate. So yeah, there we go. He resigns and just for you guys... Very important position. Okay, let's do, let's play this little game for a second. What do you think I was about to play after G6? What do you think would be the best move? And uh, just for the record, it is not Rook G5, dude. He just takes your Rook. Okay, that would be bad. Okay, just focus. You can do better. So here, I couldn't really see clearly, but I mean, there's Queen H5. He kind of has to take, then we take. He goes King D7. We pick up this. That was my thinking process. We've got two rooks and a knight. Hey, that should be pretty good. Now, there is no clear mating net, but also his queen cannot really infiltrate. So, I was assuming this is winning. It's only like a plus five according to the computer, which is definitely good enough, but I'm curious whether there could be anything better along the way. So G6. Yeah, taking. Yeah, taking should be top line there. Rook g5, I don't understand why you would play such move, but anyways, uh, I'm not going to judge you. So, uh, yeah, just taking and um, what I've been winning. Now, if we go a little bit uh, back in the opening, there was an interesting position where I just castled. I could have played h3 as well. Actually, I, I was intending to play h3, but I just castled for some reason. I just <laughs> forgot, I guess. <laughs> Uh, should have played 94 pinning. I don't know why he didn't do that. But yeah, I just wanted to check and let you guys know that bishop b5 is very legit because it's most likely gonna lead to a scenario like this where you play h3, he takes, and you can sort of double up his pawns and get into a structure like this and you make sure he gets no activity. That's also a very nice concept to be aware of. And after takes... Yeah, I mean, just got his position... King h1, top move. Uh, yeah, we got lucky with that. Uh, and then... Queen f2, just playing a little bit of prophylactic chess right now. Because this, you know, I was waiting for this. I don't know how this opponent was <laughs> not plundering this, by the way. This is, this is very impressive. And then... I was just kind of slowly improving the position. Bishop d4. Apparently bishop d4 a little bit of a mistake. So apparently the snooker lesson it's still something that I need to get better at. But uh, looked okay. I mean plus 2 if he plays king f8. Very ugly move. Just this should be okay. Here to be honest I consider knight f4. But I saw that there is knight g2. So I thought okay just an extra knight. That has to be an easy win. So um, yeah I think that's... Pretty much about this game, and uh, with that being said, we can just move on to the following game.